Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Titans as we get into the Warhound Titan. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And if you have any questions about any lore, check out our channel. We have a huge archive of just so many uh, Warhammer 40k lore videos. But you could always request down in the comments below uh, what type of lore video you would like to see next. With that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Warhound Titan. The Warhound Class Titan belongs to the smallest class of Imperial Titan and is used as a scout or as a flanking element of a Titan Legion, in conjunction with other of its kind. The Warhound differs structurally from other Imperial Titans, in that it sacrifices a humanoid appearance for a canine-like chassis with reverse-jointed legs and shoulder weapon mounts. Warhound Scout Titans are lightly armed and armored compared to other Titans, although still fearsome compared to the more standard armored combat vehicles, deployed by the various intelligent races of the Milky Way galaxy. The Warhound Titan, despite being a class of Scout Titan, is still an immense war machine that stands at about 14 meters, approximately 45 feet tall. On the battlefield, the Warhound has been proven to be very effective, as the double-barreled Turbo Blaster Destructor, which it is now possible to mount on a Warhound class chassis, can destroy even super heavy armored vehicles with ease. When they are deployed against other Titans, Warhound Titans use their superior speed and maneuverability to avoid enemy weapon fire. They also make use of pack-oriented techniques to destroy enemy Titans, and there are some instances when lone Warhound Titans have defeated heavier classes. Warhound Titans are protected by two Void Shield Generators and are otherwise lightly armored, emphasizing speed over strength. They possess two Titan grade weapon mounts and are limited in their selection to the lighter class of Titan weapons. They can have an Inferno Gun, a weapon most effective against hordes and swarms, where the weapon's superheated Promethium fuel tears through the enemy's ranks with devastating effect. Unlike a typical flamer weapon, the Inferno Gun ejects superheated self ignited Promethium in a great arc so that it crashes down atop the enemy forces. The pressure in the weapon's barrel can be adjusted so that the Inferno Gun can either be fired at a very short range or many meters away. The versatility, as well as its great power, make the Inferno Gun a great weapon against almost any type of infantry. Even vehicles aren't safe from this type of attack. A lightly armored chassis will surely melt away when faced with the terrifying power of the Inferno Gun. Such is the gun power that even heavily armored battle tanks such as the Tau Empire's Hammerhead and the Imperial Guard's Malkador can have their armored compromise. The only drawbacks to the use of this weapon are the gun's comparatively short range and its inability to seriously damage any enemy titans. A Warhound Titan can also have a plasma blast gun, which is among the largest plasma cannons in existence. Plasma blast guns are enormous double-barreled plasma weapons capable of two firing modes a full shot, which discharges both barrels at the same time, and a rapid shot, which discharges the barrels independently. A full shot is most effective against armored targets, and the combined power of both plasma bolts is enough to tear apart any armor with ease. It also produces a large amount of splash damage, making it effective against infantry formations as well. The rapid fire mode allows for a large volume of shots to be fired more quickly but at a reduction in strength and area effect. Rapid fire is most effective against fast moving vehicles and large units of infantry, as the cooldown time is lessened considerably. The Warhound Titan can also carry a turbo laser destructor, most oftentimes just called a turbo laser. It is a much larger and very powerful version of a LAS cannon that uses complex optical devices and heavy power input to amplify the laser beam into a wider, enhanced beam of laser energy, carrying enough punch to explosively vaporize its impact point in an area of effect blast. The Warhound Titan can also carry a Vulcan Megabolter. A Vulcan Megabolter is an immense, hydraulically driven, 5-barrel, air-cooled, electrically fired rotary bolt weapon. The Vulcan Megabolter is one of the most potent and effective anti-infantry weapons available to the Imperium 
and easily carves through swaths of heretics or xenos, with mass reactive shells larger than human skulls, firing two at a time, leaving a heavy carbonized reek in the air. This weapon is comprised of massive, dual-heavy caliber rotary bolters with multiple barrels. Its staggering rate of fire makes it an ideal weapon for use against infantry, light vehicles, and even small structures. The most common configuration of armaments for Warhound Titans seen on the battlefield are the use of plasma blast guns and the Vulcan Megabolter. During major engagements, Warhounds operate on the flanks of Imperial forces seeking to engage enemy tanks and infantry formations rather than other titans, where their lighter weapons can still inflict immense damage and provide the maximum tactical benefit. A Warhound-class titan normally requires a human crew of five members, which increases to twelve when constructs like servitors and servo squads are included. Like all such war machines, a Warhound Scout Titan is commanded by an officer of the Adeptus Mechanicus Collegia Titanica, known as a princip whose cerebellum is cybernetically interlinked through the Titan's command throne directly to the Titan's mind impulse unit, enabling him to oversee all aspects of the war machine's operations. He is assisted by two junior officers known as Modertai, who control the Titan's navigation, movement, sensor operations, and weapon system. In their turn, the Modertai control a complement of three remote servitor slaves, which have been hardwired into the Scout's Titan's weapons, void shield generators, and engineering systems. From the engine room, two tech priests make the final human members of the crew. It is their job to control the output of the Titan's plasma generator, the heart of the Titan, supplying power to all the war machine's various systems as required. Four servo skulls are also usually tasked to a Warhound Titan's crew to assist its human members with any miscellaneous task or unexpected need for repairs that might crop up in battle. Like other Titans, Warhound Scout Titans are equipped with an artificially intelligent machine spirit that interfaces directly to the Princep through the MIU, thus avoiding the Imperium's ancient prescription against allowing the development of truly independent machine intelligences. Yet over the centuries, these machine spirits can develop a surprising amount of independence and even personalities of their own. Being faster and more agile than the standard battle titans, Warhound class titans are deployed as the eyes and ears of the titan legions on campaign, raging far ahead of the main battle group. They are the only titans to be normally deployed to the titan legion in packs of two members, as compared to the larger battle and emperor titans, which normally operate alone. By the Collegia Titanica tradition, Warhound Titans can only operate in a pack with a maximum of two Titans as a result of the actions of the Chaos Warband Titans on Terra during the Horus Heresy. When the Traitor Titan Legions landed on Terra, the Arc Traitor Horus let them terrorize Terran civilians in squad sizes of 10 units of Warhounds. As a result of this bloodstained history, during the formation of the Imperium after the conclusion of the Horus Heresy, the Adeptus Terra ordered the Titan Legions to never again allow Warhound Scout Titans to operate in squads larger than two, to prevent such horrors from being perpetuated upon humanity again. Obviously, the forces of chaos do not feel bound to this rule. And those were 40 facts on the Warhound Titan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like the lore of all the different Titans, please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be putting out more videos on all the different classes of Titan. Um, if you have any requests, comment down below, of course, your favorite Titan class. Just put it down in the description below, and we'll try to get it as soon as possible. The Warhound Titan is probably the most common Titan that I see around. Um, I've seen, I think, only two Titans my entire um 40k career I guess you could say uh, and now I kind of understand that they're more for imperial or sorry for infantry so they're good at destroying a lot of hordes uh, I'm tempted to purchase one but again a titan is something that um, you know a hardcore hobbyist would get when their army is all said and done and I still need to build my imperial fist I still need to build my Skatari and my inquisitor army um, but again, my Inquisitor army is probably going to benefit from a huge, monstrous Warhound Titan. So I'm definitely going to look into um, purchasing one in the future.
Uh, if you guys have any requests for other topics of Warhammer 40k, not necessarily Titans, please comment down below. We read all those uh, comments and we uh, base our videos based on, based on your request. Um, so again, guys, uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. And if you like what we do, uh, share our videos and you can support us on Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. If you can't, we understand. Uh, no biggie. Simply by liking, commenting, and just watching, it really helps out the channel. Uh, so again, guys, thank you so much for everything, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.